So my name is Nas Jung. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer in Chipset Media. Uh, Chipset Media is designing the video codec hardware. So my main role is developing Chipset Media API. And I also have some experience with multimedia framework like a VAPI media driver and briefwell to Linux driver. So uh, lately I have been focusing on briefwell to driver development and I deeply worked with collaborative engineers for off streaming job. So I'm happy to announce that Wave 5 driver is merged in Linux kernel mainline. So let's start. So Briefwell driver is Linux kernel that provides an interface to control various video devices. So host and application can handle the video device through the Briefwell to iOS PL uh, without considering which vendor's video device is working. So and video device includes the video related device and audio related device such as webcam or image sensor or radio. And today's topic, video codec, is also included in video device. So I will talk about the simple brief IOCTL flow. First, query cap, which obtained the information for video device capabilities. And set format. Set the buffer format information which host wants to get from the video device or set the set to video device. And we felt to core help have two types of buffer type. First one is capture type. Uh, which device fill the valid data to the buffer, so host can get the buffer from the device. The other one is the output type. Uh, host fill the valid buffer and device get the buffer from host. And request buffer to allocate the buffer, query buffer and get the information for the allocated buffers. So host can assess the, buff assess the buffer uh, using this information. And queue the buffer, host transfer the buffer to preferred to driver and so brief for driver have an ownership of queued buffer. And stream on, start actual processing in this point. And dequeued buffer, host get the buffer from the brief driver. Brief driver transfer the buffer to host if uh, it finished to use. And host keep queuing and dequeuing the buffer until the whole processing is finished. And if the fin uh, processing is finished, uh, host call the stream off to finish the streaming. And we built driver support several interface to host. The first one is video buffer to interface. Uh, it's related with the video buffer memory allocation and management. And this supports three types of buffer. Uh, first one is DMA SDG for physically scattered memory. And other one is VMLOC for Linux kernel memory. And DMA contig is physically contiguous memory. So uh, th this interface to support using the file descriptor for the each buffer. So don't need to copy the buffer to user space or refer to driver. And it is also related with the video buffer queue and DQ and state management. The other interface is memory to memory. Uh, it's related with the video codec or scalars or format converters. Uh, both devices uh, need the input buffer and output buffer. So each support both output and capture streaming I.O. And each also support multiple contexts. And internally, this memory-to-memory uh, -memory core handle the M2M uh, M job uh, if bo both buffers are available. Next interface, event e interface. Uh, it's general way to pass the event to user space. So if the driver 
wanted to inform a specific uh, event to host, uh, they used this event interface. And event interface is just told in each event queue. So host can get the event uh, in order from the queue. Uh, last interface is control interface. Uh, host can set the specific parameter value through this control interface. And it also provides user specific IOSTL command uh, to fit their device. And extended control interface is also available, but most of uh, extended control interface is related with encoder codec. So I want to talk about the video codec a little bit. Uh, video data is uh, video data size is really big, so. We usually use the video data after compressed with several algorithms. And we call, uh, we can call it encoding. And we call the compressed data as bit stream. So decoder uh, is compressed bit stream to raw data. And encoder means compressed raw data to bit stream. So video coding need input buffer and output buffer. Uh, this is the point. So I will explain the IOSTL flow for the stateful decoder. Uh, first step, the host call the IOSTL for output buffer type. Uh, this is the same for the previous slides. And call the start stream on. The preferred driver start to passing, uh, passing the bit stream header data because bit stream header data is used to set the capture buffer format. But the output uh, buffer is not enough to pass the header data. The user keep queuing and dequeuing the output buffer type until the uh, preferred driver success to pass the header data. And if the header data is passed, the preferred driver inform inform it through the source change event and host get the information through the get format capture type and then uh, call the IOSTL for capture type like uh, output type. After both uh, output type and capture type stream on is called, uh, host keep queuing and dequeuing the output and capture buffer and prefer to driver continuous decoding. Encoder flow is a little bit different. Uh, first, set the, cap, uh, set the format for capture type, and then set the format for output type together. And set the param for the output type. Uh, this command is set the frame interval. After that, uh, allocate buffer for output and capture buffer together, and then query buffer and start stream on together. After both buffer type is called for stream on, uh, user keep queuing and dequeuing the both output and capture buffer like a decoder. And video preferred driver continuous encoding. Uh, this is the uh, general way for the preferred IOSTL flow for decoder and encoder. So some other application may uh, use the different flow for the preferred driver. So now we can understand a little bit about the flow for preferred driver. So I will talk about the initial development of an FPGA board. Uh, this is the our FPGA test environment. Our FPGA board is uh, connected with Linux PC through the PCI cable. So we don't have real video device in my test environment. So I have to develop the FPGA repo driver. This is the PCI driver. And I create the dummy device in this driver. And this driver only access the FPGA board register and memory and pulling the status registers to uh, interrupt, uh, to occur the dummy interrupt to GPU driver. 
So as to dummy devices created, uh, preferred driver can probe correctly. This is the sample code for create dummy device. Uh, the important function is the last one, platform device register full. Uh, you can also set the dummy IRQ and the memory reason in the resource structure. This is the sample code for the IR, uh, create the dummy IRQ. And in the pooling status function, just read the uh, status register and occur the dummy uh, interrupt using the general handle IRQ. I will explain how to implement the preferred driver. Uh, first, preferred related module provide lots of API. Uh, so we can implement the preferred driver utilizing that API based on normal device driver. And if the preferred driver is loaded, uh, our driver will be communicated with the preferred related module. So this is the sample code for create the preferred device and video device in the preferred driver. Uh, you can call, if you call the preferred device register function and video register device, uh, the video device and preferred device will be created. And you can implement the customized callback function for preferred IOSTL. Each callback function is connected with the preferred IOSTL. And <coughs> sorry. But if, if you don't need to uh, implement the, your own, own uh, customized function, you can use the helper function. Uh, because preferred core have a lot of helper function to uh, set, set, set for callback function. So this is the M2M helper function. The naming is defined with preferred to M2M, IOSTL, blah, blah, blah. But uh, and it called the preview we need to call helper function internally. So if we want to use video device interface and memory to memory interface together, you can just use the M2M uh, helper function. And M2M helper function also have a specific call callback function. It called, uh, it have three, uh, three function. First one is device run. Uh, you can write the uh, uh, begin, in this, in this point, the begin the actual job in this point. And jam ready function, if one source buffer and one destination buffer are ready, uh, this function will be called. And this function called before device run. So you can check the your hardware is ready to run the processing in this function. And job abort is abort the running job of before the your job is not finished. This is the preview to core helper function. Uh, the naming is preview to under IOSTL under blah, blah, blah. And this function also called the preview to core helper function internally. And it also have a specific callback function. The first one is queue setup. This function will be called before memory allocation. And so driver should check the record number of the buffer and report to it to host. The next one is start streaming. Uh, it called once to enter streaming state. And stop, stop, stop streaming called when streaming state must be disabled. And when, when buffer is queued to queued from the host, uh, buffer queue function will be called. This is the some condition for how, uh, this is some condition how to prohibit the call, callback function is called. Uh, if call request buffer is called, queued setup function is called directly. 
because request buffer is related with the memory allocation. And created buffer is called, queued setup function is called, uh, it's same like that. And buffer core queue buffer is called, uh, if the st stream one is not called, uh, buffer prepare function is called. But if stream on is already called, uh, Q buffer is directly called the buffer Q function. And the Q buffer called the buffer finish. And stream on, stream on function is connected with the buffer Q. If the buff Q the buffer is ena uh, enabled, existed, the buffer Q function is called. And start stream is called at one time. And stream off is called, the stop streaming is called directly. And if the remain buffer is uh, zero, the buffer finish function is called. This is uh, some debugging option for the VB prefer to call. Uh, you can add the debug, debug level in this parameter, in the, in the model parameter. And you can also test the v to using the v to ctl program, each application to control v to drivers. And this program is open source and managed by the Linux media maintainers. And also you can test the decoder and encoder using the uh, below command line. And I also use the before to compliance program. Uh, this is also open source and managed by the Linux media maintainers. And you can test almost our preferred to IOCTL. So this is the sample result from the before to compliance. Uh, you can check the your IOCTL implementation is correct or not. And I'm start to talk about the verification on TI target board. Uh, before that, I want to talk about the uh, Linux kernel build option because the preferred related module is not enabled in default uh, kernel config option. So you have to enable the multimedia support config option. And I want to talk about the device tree, how to the prefer to uh, prefer to the driver find the your video device. Uh, device tree is a data structure that describes the hardware. So if you build the Linux source code, uh, device tree files are generated to DTB file, and bootloader load the DTB and Linux kernel pass the DTB file to get the information of hardware device. So Linux can load the correct driver uh, left for the video de uh, device tree information. So the below image is the our video device tree. Uh, it indicates the compatible name and register and interrupt and clocks and power domain information. So each device vendor should inform the device tree documentation. Documentation is located in the Linux kernel main line. You can find in the documentation and device tree bindings media folder. And this documentation use the YML format. So you can see, you can see the, uh, you can see that uh, our, our Wave 5 device need a uh, compatible parameter and register parameter and clocks and interrupts and power domains. So in the device tree should uh, indicates the all of the information as uh, as same with the, this documentation. So in the driver side, uh, we can use the that device tree value in the uh, driver code. If you uh, 
define the uh, off device ID structure and set the same compatible name in here. Uh, your if when you use the Linux kernel function, you can find the correct device tree information in the v your v to driver. So after load the driver, uh, I face the lots of race conditioning error in the TI board because I want to talk about I want to talk a little bit about the, our chipset media command queue architecture. Uh, our architecture uh, host send the multiple command to our formula. So we uh, host do not wait previous command done. It means preview can occur the multiple interrupt to host. But previous, uh, our before LT driver version used the only IRQ handle, handler. So in, in our BD, in our preview driver, uh, do the lot of job in the IR handler because we get the decoder result and encoder result in the IR handler. We read the lot of register in the IR handler, so it makes the uh, hang up or some race conditioning error. So I use the threaded IR handler. So in the IR IR handler, I just read the interrupt and. Uh, save the interrupt in the queue and clear the interrupt uh, as soon as possible. And then threaded IR queue. Uh, I will check the interrupt region in threaded IR queue and handle the decoding, encoding result. And you can also use the mutex in the threaded IR queue. So this is the sample code. I create the uh, threaded IR queue in the probe time. And then in the VPU IRQ handler, uh, I just read the reason and save the reason to the uh, save the reason using the KFIFO, and you return the IRQ wake thread value. It means threaded IRQ is start running. So in the threaded IRQ, I just read the reason and do and managing the decoding result and encoding result in the finish process function. And I use the GStreamer for the testing our VFL driver. GStreamer is open source multimedia framework and it's working based on the pipeline. There are a lot of plugin is already implemented in the GStreamer and so who a uh, user can config the pipeline to f uh, meet their use case. There are source plugin and tmux plugin and sync plugin are exist. So preferred plugin also supported. This plugin is included in the GS plugins good. And GStream also supports the test program. Uh, it's called GS Launch. Uh, this is the example for the decoder and encoder. Uh, in decoder case, uh, GSTM are working with the parser plugin. So, parser plugin pass the header data and transfer the bit stream uh, by frame unit to the prefer to driver. This is the different from the prefer to CTL program. And GStream also supports the validate program. You can test the trick play like a seek, stop, resume. And this program refer the scenario file. Uh, scenario file looks like the below line. And this is the debugging uh, option for the GStreamer. Uh, you can set the uh, environment variable. So I, I only use the five and six log level to debug the GStreamer. And you can also save the debug file through the export GST debug file. 
And you can also see the specific object uh, debugging message. Uh, you can you you can use the object name and debug level before uh, call the GS launch command. And I did a lot, did a lot of tests using the Flustr test. Uh, this test. This is a testing frame framework for the decoder conformers. This is also open source program. This support uh, HVC and H264 and VP8, VP9, uh, various video codec. And testing uh, ISO streams and JHT streams. Uh, so this program compared the output data. So your decoding result is, uh, you can check your decoding result is correct or not. So this is the simple command for the Fluster test. Uh, you can test the decoder by the test suite, or you can also test by one stream using the command. And I want to talk about the finish sequence because uh, Linux engineer always enjoy the control C command. So in normal case, the preferred driver report to the uh, buffer flag last to host. So host check the last buffer flag and call the stop uh, decoding command to the preferred driver. And call the stream of for both out and capture buffer. And the other case is host call the stop command first and then dequeue the buffer until the last buffer flag is uh, enab enabled from the preferred driver. But at the normal case, uh, if host call the stream off, but your job is still running, uh, the job abort uh, M2M callback function is called. So you have to uh, release the any transaction in this function and stop streaming uh, callback function is called. And I want to talk about the error handling uh, preferred specification defined the two types of error. First one is recover recoverable error. In this case, preferred driver just report the uh, error flag to the host, and it means decoding and encoding may continue as normal. So host just skip the decode buffer or encode the new buffer to preferred driver. And fatal failure case, uh, it does not allow the decoding and encoding to continue. So driver should report the uh, EIO error to the prefer to the host for our IO steer function. But you can uh, easily managing it using the these two function. You can set the VB to queue error for the post queue. The uh, EIO error is reported automatically uh, by the preferred core. And last chapter, I want to talk about the Linux kernel contribution. Uh, Linux kernel is open source, everyone already know about it, uh, but, but it have a development cycle. Uh, before they release the new Linux kernel version, they test the RC version. And RC version is released until release the new Linux kernel version. And RC version is created after merge window is closed. So during the merge window period, stable code is merged into the main line. And it is approximately two weeks. So first step, I suggest to read the kernel document as much as you can. 
and subscribe the mailing list which you are interested in the uh, subsystem group and get the familiar with git because uh, if you are using the git the upstreaming process will more e easier than before so this is the simple flow for the Linux kernel contribution. First, get the latest Linux kernel source tree and change source code, and commit your change and create patch file. Send mail to maintainers and communicate with reviewers. So I'll talk about the coding style first. So there are uh, lots of rules are described in the this kernel documentation. Uh, I cannot mention all about it in this presentation. But uh, there are some rules for taps and the preferred limit on the length of single line is 80 columns. And then uh, you have to run the check patch jump here. Uh, this program checks the driver style violation in patches or source files. Uh, you can find it in the Linux kernel mainline in the Linux and script folders. And the maintainers prefer to avoid the unnamed nomenclature constant, and you have to remove the dead code and remove the duplicate co code. Uh, in my case, uh, I got a feedback from the reviewers. They wanted to uh, we utilize the prefer to core function as much as we can. So, in your case, uh, using the uh, Linux kernel function is much better to accept your uh, co com commit patch and add the comment. Uh, this information is uh, help to understand your code for reviewers and maintainers. So tell what your code does, not how. And also, maintainers prefer the patch format, like a canonical patch format. So in subject line, you have to write the subsystem and then write the summary phrase and in body line you can you, you can add the from uh, from tag with the author name if you if committer and author is same uh, if submitter and author name is same you don't need to add the from tag and describe this commit and add the empty line and add the signed off by tag uh, it's, uh, it is uh, certified the right to open source page and to improve the tracking of who did what. So you have to uh, add the this tag when you submit the patch. And if your patch are, uh, if you have multiple patch, you have to create the cover letter. So you have to describe the multiple patches series. So uh, we recommend include the test report and the version history. What is the change compared with before uh, previous version? And you are, you, you also run the check check patch jump here command. Finally, we can send the email. Uh, I use the git email. Uh, I try to use the other mailbox, but the git email is much e uh, git email is easier than other other one uh, and you have to send the mail to the maintainers which is related with your patch so you can check the maintainers through the scripts in the main line a uh, linux corner uh, you can find in the linux on the linux in script folder and we can wait the feedback from the community, and you can also check the patchwork for a subsystem project, and may may you can may get the receive the comments within a few weeks, and 
you should respond to reviewers and thank them for their time and when you try to have when, when you have to reply the reply to the reviewers or you have to use the interrupt reply style and the last slide is some tribal slice because reviewers use the this kind of words Maybe you, you can know more about it, but for me, it's a little bit difficult to understand. So my slide is finished today. Thanks again for coming to my presentation. And do you have any question? Any question? Sorry, could you ask again? So I, ca I, I cannot catch your question. Sorry. Hello. So for uh, V4, L2, uh, encode, and decode, does that go through something like VA API, or are those algos built into the actual oh. generic built driver? Uh, in my case, state. Uh, v filter drive have uh, two types of the encoder, maybe the state list and state full. So state full is uh, all of them built in the V filter driver, but state list is the like a V API driver. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, thanks for the presentation. I, uh, you mentioned that the encoder and decoder can report an error. An error can be recoverable or non-recoverable. Can you provide some example of each category, especially the recoverable errors that you managed in your work? For encoder case? Yeah. Uh, for encoder case, if the output buffer is not enough to the fill the encoded bit stream data, in this case, uh, in in my case, I report the uh, fatal error to the host because we cannot keep encoding uh, with the small size of the output data. And recoverable error case is, I think, most of recoverable error case is related with uh, each vendor's hardware or firmware. So. Yeah, is it is it make up answer? Yes, Good. and about uh, decoding, I guess maybe an error could be a corrupted stream, cor corrupted bit stream. Mm -hmm. So is that recoverable? Uh, if if only the image is the corrupted, is the recoverable error because we can keep decoding with the uh, uh, with the new input data. But if your I think yeah, I think it's the recovery error because we can keep decoding. Just the image is broken. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And did you find that the uh, the V4L2 framework was matching well with the design of your hardware, or have you had difficulties like mapping the features of your hardware in V4L2? Uh, and also, were there specific hardware features that you could not support in, in the V4L2 driver because it was not like possible to support it uh, with the current state of V4L2? Uh, actually, we can support the V4L2 driver without modify the hardware because hardware our hardware uh, just uh, if the information uh, input information is correct, other 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 our hardware is can decoding, so the most uh, and we have a firmware. So if we fail to driver want uh, other additional feature, we can support it, uh, modify the firmware. And is this, this is something you had to do? Did you have to modify the firmware to like 
match with the expectation of V4L2 or your existing firmware was fine? For the stateful uh, case, we don't need to modify the firmware because our firmware is already, already fit the uh, uh, V4L2 requirement. But if the stateless case, maybe we have to change our formula. So uh, one of the earlier slides, you had a control ID like V4L2, CID, min buffers for output. So my question is, is how is that different from the VB2Qs, so min buffers needed? There's one uh, field there, right? Is that different or? Min, min frame different? buffer, you mean? Yeah, in VB2Q, there's like a, a variable called min buffers needed. So is that, are they different or, or, or they're just? Are they is that redundant or there's a special purpose for it? So, so you're, for you're asking different from the mean frame buffer control and yeah, VB2 right. core, yeah. v, v video buffer to interface? Yeah. Well, the reason I ask is I've never used this min buffers needed for output before, but ah, I've definitely ah. seen the VB2Q min buffers needed before. So, so min frame buffer uh, control is the optional case because uh, it, it's a minimum buffer to inform, uh, it's, it's the information for the minimum buffer. So if the host set the enough buffer, so they don't need to check the minimum buffer control value. I guess it's queryable in one form, and with VB2, you'll only figure it when you queue, I guess. That's what, maybe that's what is happening. Oh, so, so, sorry, sorry, I can't catch your question. No, I'm saying, uh, I'm just wondering if this is the case that with, with the CID, it is it is queryable ahead of time. But with, uh, with VB2, Q minimum buffers needed. You you probably error out a little bit earlier, right? Maybe during request buffer or something. I don't know. It's probably yeah. Oh yes, yes, yes. Ah, okay, yes. You can check the minimum buffer through the request buffer. So yeah, it's the same for the min control. Uh, min buffer control encoder control is same value from the buffer oh, to the. It's supposed to be the same value. Okay. Yes, this is yes. two ways of querying it. Yes. Okay. Uh, we, yeah, we, we take uh, such a long time, almost, uh, two, two years, two years. So, uh, let's say for scenarios like, uh, resolution change for the encoder, like you are encoding the stream and there's a resolution change due to a video on demand use case due to lesser network bandwidth or something. So uh, how, how do you support that? Does the spec uh, explain some sequence for resolution change event at the encoder side and similarly at the decoder side? Oh, in, uh, as far as I know, encoder parameter change is controlled by the encoder control interface, codec control interface. So it's a little bit different from the decoder uh, resolution change case. Yeah, I think decoder, maybe the parser or something will detect the event and will send some resolution change uh, V4L2 event or something. Mm -hmm. But for the encoder, uh, I don't know if the spec uh, explains something for it. Yes. Like, do you need to reset, reset the state machine or is it just okay to on the fly just change the resolution and pass the new uh, format uh, with height format and proceed with the encoding? Oh, I think in is the on the fly. The mm -hmm. encoder parameter is changed by on the fly because I also 
don't know the how to inform it to the host. The parameter is changed. So I, I, I have to uh, find more information in the Linux kernel documentation, but I, I'm not sure about this. Well, no problem. Thanks. Thanks. performance comparison on different architectures or cores like ARM or Intel and the, what is this related to your work? On, only for a brief filter driver? Or yeah, I mean, me measure the performance of uh, video encoding, decoding. Mm -hmm. Do you have, do you do what do you have data to show like, because we do, uh, not me, just our team like do a lot of performance uh, analysis of the video encoding and decoding like the X264. I'm not sure this is related to your work or not. It's just curious about if you have those performance numbers. Uh, actually, I didn't check the performance, uh, exact performance value uh, in the V-Felt driver. But so so I, I didn't do anything for the performance checking or something like that. Mm 